All right, you guys, let's get the hell out of here. Look, whoever you are, we don't need your help. But we need yours. Carl Dana, nuclear physicist. At the top of his profession, he walked out on his career to become an environmental activist. Dana. I've heard that name before. He's the one who threw sheep's blood on your limo in New York last summer. Oh, yeah. An intense young man. The police have him right now. He jumped off a smokestack this morning. Even Greenpeace finds him too radical. Guys! I know this place isn't much, but uh, it's our environment. And we have to keep it healthy, not only for ourselves, but for those that come after us. This, 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 this takes 500 years to decompose. The Parthenon is in ruins, but plastic is forever. Dana? You made your bail. No, I did not. I'm making a statement here. I don't want to be bailed out. Tell it to them. John Harding, head of internal medicine, City Medical Center, field surgeon in Vietnam, expert in trauma care. Headed medical assistance team at Bhopal, Ethiopia, Guatemala. Advised in bone marrow transplant at Chernobyl. <coughs> In town, huh? All right, just clamp it off. Clamp it off. Come on, I'm in a hurry here. Hurry here. Come on. Nice and easy. That's it. Nice and easy. All right, that's going to take two more stitches. Just pull them nice and tight. That's it. First time on the riverboat? Normally, I work postnatal. <laughs> too noisy for me. You're going to be just fine. I don't think he can hear you, Doc. I was talking to the nurse. You can close now. Next. Doctor, look, I know this may not be the right time, but we're going to have to generate some paperwork before this goes much further. Look, the airline's on my butt. I've got 15 major medical outfits to deal with. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to generate paperwork? You don't stop wasting my time. You're going to be signing death certificates. Uh, uh Sid, guy over there. Which guy? Any guy. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Harding, can we talk? Oh, no, man, not right now. Look, I haven't eaten since the Eisenhower administration, all right? I represent a man who is interested in securing your services for a short time. <laughs> How short and who's the man? Frederick Winter. <laughs> oh, no, no deal. No, even he doesn't have enough money for me. We thought you might feel that way. But... <laughs> Temperature continues to build. Getting worse. I hope Winter's team gets here soon. They're all here, but I'm afraid they're not happy. So what do you think? Ten million? No. Twenty at least. What? Huh? People who can't be bought are very expensive. think we're the only ones invited to this party? I wasn't exactly invited. It's nothing short of kidnapping. At least they didn't hit you with a shot of ketamine hydrochloride. They drugged you? A lot of egos in that room. How would they ever work together? We're giving them a common cause. I don't eat fish. That wild man of Borneo still worries me. I don't eat meat. If we can get the zealot to climb down from his organic soapbox, we may just survive this. No, I don't drink California wine. What do they want with us? I don't know. 
They obviously don't want us to go hungry while we do it. Our Dr. Harding will be the key. Convince him the rest will play along. He's that bad? If there was a death penalty for pollution, Frederick Winter would have been the first man to hang. I don't want to have anything to do with him. I'm sure none of us do. But he's gone to an awful lot of trouble to bring us together. I don't get it. A doctor, a physicist, a dolphin chaser, and a guy who hangs out with gorillas? Chimpanzees. Sorry. By the way, I thought your paper on the biota of the Jingu River was brilliant. We can all swap autographs later. What in the hell are we doing here? Winter has a problem. Predator only screams when he's trapped. A predator? You're too kind. Frederick Winter is a butcher, an exploiter, a profiteer, and the King Hell environmental rapist of the century. Advisor to presidents, major contributor to worldwide charities, patron of the arts. There are many sides to Mr. Winter. <laughs> yes, all of them indictable. Assault, kidnapping, unlawful imprisonment. We have very good lawyers, Dr. Harding. I'm sorry about the inconvenience, but I'm sure you'll understand once I explain. We have an anomaly at one of our nuclear power plants. An anomaly? She means they're about to lose it. If these figures are accurate, then it's time to call in all the king's horses and all the king's men. That's why you're here. What made you think we'd help a man like Winter? I'm not here to plead his case. I don't care what you think about Mr. Winter, and neither does he. He's prepared to give each of you unlimited funding for your own research. Money like that's never free. These are the facts. You have the ability to help. There could be loss of human life. Destruction of a major part of the environment. You can't just stand by and let this thing happen. And besides, how can any of you pass up a challenge like this? This is right. We really have no choice. Of course we do. We walk and call in the Marines. If Winter gets away with this, he'll just go right back to ruining the planet in other ways. Not if we expose this can of worms to Washington and the press. There's a chance some of these pressure figures are not accurate. You're hooked already. Sure, we're hooked. We're all hooked. What's the alternative? The government? Department of Energy, Nuclear Regulatory, DOD? You want me to go on? Just getting them to the table would be four days into the crisis. What we've got here is a two-day crisis. Exactly. Wait a minute. Are we saying we're going to do this? Look, I'll grant you it's a deal with the devil, but we don't do it. We all go to hell. the neighborhood, but Mr. Winter wanted to provide you with a place where you wouldn't be distracted. And where the uh, media couldn't observe our efforts? When have you known the media to be of help in a crisis? Well, I can see Winter's point. Uh, by the way, when do I get to see him? You can channel everything you want through me. We had to put this together on short notice, but I think we've anticipated most of your needs. Mainframe computer. Satellite downlinks, complete communication center, diagnostic labs. What if we'd said no? Mr. Winter is a good judge of character. Shame he doesn't have any of his own. Nice toys. Better than the stuff I got in my lab. And of course, we brought in specialists in each of your fields to assist you in your work. Totally inadequate. I only work with my own equipment. Yes, we know. Check, check that one off the list. Is this the whole 
Yep. No. You broke into my lab? Call it a temporary relocation. Let's get the circus up and running. These printouts are nuts. The computer says that control rods have been lowered into the vessel. Now, if that's true, the temperature would be going down. The temperature is going up. Look, we've run every configuration we can think of, and the numbers keep coming out the same. The temperature in the core goes up 10 degrees Celsius every hour. But don't look at me. Look at the computer. I am. And the computer's not looking back, and you guys aren't looking ahead. Prevailing wind patterns for the last 24 hours has been out of the south-southeast. If a meltdown happens, the main elements released will be iodine-131, cesium-137, and strontium-90. All have half-lives of hundreds of years. You won't see a deer or a rabbit around here for the next 500 years. Radiation leakage would invade the water table. Every source would be affected, and the river system would carry it right into the ocean, contaminating every form of life in both fresh and salt water. And the worst is, if we have an explosion and a subsequent release of plutonium, this entire region becomes uninhabitable for the next 50,000 years. Hmm. It's one good thing about a worst-case scenario. Once you put it out there, things can only get better, right? Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in crisis standard time, which means that this is the only clock in the world until we put out this fire. All right now, what about the emergency cooling system? You close the river outlets, of course. Uh, no, not yet. Well, then do it now. If this thing pops, we have to retain as much coolant as possible. Yeah, okay, Angie, shut down all the channels. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, uh, where did you get your degree? Stanford. Why? There's a court. Why don't you call them up and tell me you want your money back? Okay, Winter said I had to cooperate with you, but I don't have to take that kind of crap. Sorry, Bert. May I call you Bert? Tunnels one through four in the south quadrant closed. Good. Yeah, cancel that. Tunnel four still reads open. Doesn't anything in here work? Run it again. No response. All right, forget it. You have got a manual override. Yeah, it's in the tunnel, but we can't backwash it without going out of scram. Give me Romano. Who's Romano? I'm not talking to you. Hi. Yes, Carl. You've got some swimming to do. And take Monkey Boy with you, will you? Don't let him hear you say that. OK, people, open up one and two. Good. Now let the old water out of four so she can open the outlet valve. Good call. Maybe some hope for you yet, Bert? Tunnel four removes off to the right. The valve controls are on the left near the doors. Keep the radio on this frequency to talk to me. And keep the line open back to Harding. Are you listening to me? I have ears. No offense. It's just my life down there. Listen, I don't know you that well. We don't have room for a lone wolf in this operation. What do you know about wolves? <laughs>
You okay? I'm finding that teamwork isn't altogether unpleasant. The computer said there was no water in that tunnel. I just lost half the emergency cord. We cannot trust any of this there. I don't get it. This whole program is completely haywire. The, the computer said the rods were down, the temperature keeps going up. It said there's no water in the tunnel, there's water in the tunnel. Now we have lost the coolant, and the core is going to burn up. Now what I think we are looking at here is sabotage. Where in the hell is your health physics guy, and who okayed all these programs? Dr. Hunter. We're having a little trouble locating him right now. Did he work here long? As long as I've been with the company. Look, he's been absolutely reliable. Yeah. Why, 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 why in the hell would somebody in his right mind sabotage the computer and program a meltdown? That was security. They've just done an inventory in the reprocessing lab and we're down two kilos of plutonium. My hair is so boring. levels in the cooling towers are okay. I'm now entering the reactor building. Bird, I'm over the cooling tank. You're where? Don't lose your lunch, Bird. Readings are near normal in here. You're crazy to go up there. Well, we got a crazy situation up here. says well it's lying to us again and this time it's a real whopper all right i'll have roland get our own computer program up and running over here hmm? yeah she's here i'm gonna get to winter with this right away i want to see winter and i want to see him right now he wants you to see me Look, we have two ticking time bombs here. We're about eight hours away from the meltdown, and now we got some maniac running around with enough stolen plutonium to vaporize the nation of your choice. It's time to call the cops. Absolutely not. This has to remain a private affair. Call this number.
Army? If we went to the CIA, MI6, or Mossad and told them we needed to recover stolen plutonium, this is the unit they would use. <laughs> One man army? Heaven help us. Dylan's got the best track record in dealing with terrorists. He's a specialist in surveillance and tracking. Let's not pull the pin on this guy that we need him. I told you the hydraulics are shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The beast needs an overhaul, man. And what the hell are we doing here? Cashing a check with a whole lot of zeros, mate. 